My name is Ibrahim Abdelmoumi. I'll be the tutor for this course, SOC 101, which is Introduction to Sociology. The contact details and everything you need to know about this course is there. The general overview of this course, Introduction to Sociology, is in order to explain what the discipline sociology is all about. And also the course will be introduced by way of explaining and defining concepts and events that led to the emergence of this discipline known as sociology. The contributions of scholars on their perspectives will also be discussed in the course of this uh, study session. And at the end of this course, students should be able to, one, understand the concept of sociology. You can be a sociology student without understanding what the course itself means, and also be able to explain the field of sociology and how it emerged in the first place. Certain factors, certain circumstances lead to the emergence of various disciplines. Sociology is also one of those disciplines that certain factors have led to its emergence. And also, students should also be able to have the capacity to discuss and analyze events, you know, as from a sociological point of view, so to speak, just like people will explain things from law perspective, you should also be able to explain certain things from a sociological point of view. And also, it should also understand, help students understand how sociologists can help people in the society. And also how the society, which is the object of study of sociologists or the concern for sociologists, have also, in a way, tried to mold the behaviors of people in the society. The general information, your CA and everything is being discussed without wasting much of your time. Let's go straight into the study session. Introduction. What do we really mean by sociology? What is the definition? How does sociology come about? And this will lead us to understand the fact that sociology, that word itself, is the study of individuals in a social setting. That includes group, it also includes organization, it includes cultures, and as well as societies. And the interrelations of individuals, groups, and organizations, cultures, and societies that exist in the society. So sociology is the study of individuals in a social setting. Social implies that where there is one, two people communicating in the society. The social setting in which people have lived in People have lived in this social setting, and we created this social setting. That is what sociologists, you know, try to explain and give an understanding so that people will understand what really sociology is all about. So by way of definition, sociology has been defined in a number of ways by various people. Various, even sociologists and non-sociologists have tried to give explanation or define the concept of sociology. Take, for example... ML Dockham defines sociology as the science of social institution. Science of social institution. Kingsley Davis has also given his own definition where he says sociology is the general science of society. Science, the concept, has repeated in various definitions of scholars. Max Weber also has defined sociology as the science which attempts the interpretative understanding of social actions in order to in order to arrive at a casual explanation of its cause and effect so many definitions Karl Marx has given his own in other words the founding father of sociology as it's mostly been ascribed to August Comte also born between the year 1798 and 1857 tried to give his own view about the concept of sociology because he is known as the founding father of sociology, he recognized the absence of the general sciences that deals with society as a whole. If science, pure sciences, deals with issues of nature, there is also that science that should be there that will address issues of what? Social interaction. And as such, so August Comte combined two terms, socios, which is a Latin word for society, and Logos, a Greek word for studying. And for that, he combined these two words to form sociology. 
which implies literally means what? The study of society. So Comte defines sociology as the abstract and theoretical science of social phenomena subject to natural and invariable laws, the discoveries of which is the object of investigation. In other words, sociology should be about what? Study of individuals in the society. Who makes up the society? It is the same individuals. How do we relate forms the major object of focus for sociologists? And it will interest us to also know that so many things, like I explained in the earlier in my introduction, so many events led to the emergence of this discipline that we call sociology today. So for that reason, it will be important for us to also look at some of those forces. There are social forces because sociology is about what? Social event. It's about social action. It's about anything that involves two or more people in the society. There are social forces that led to the emergence of sociology. So in this study session, attempts will be made for us to understand some of those social forces that led to the emergence of this discipline we call sociology today. In the words of Karl Polanyi, the Austro-Hungarian philosopher, in his book, he termed the great transformation. He says, there are three factors that are responsible for the emergence of this discipline that we call sociology today. What are these three factors? One, the role of the French Revolution. Two, the role of the Industrial Revolution. And three, the Enlightenment era. These three factors, Karl Polanyi, in his book published in 1944, The Great Transformation, says this is what led to the transformation of, or that led to the emergence of this discipline that we call sociology today. So we are going to break down one after the other what this forces, these revolutions, what really they are. And I'll take you first on the role of the French Revolution. Even before the French Revolution, there have been interrelation, there have been social action, there have been interaction between and among the people in the society, at individual, family, group, whatever level of the society. But the French Revolution, before this revolution, it is adjured in the words of uh, August Comte, he says, the society in which he was born was not the way it is. And it is because of the crisis of that particular point in time that led to the French Revolution. Because before this period, the French Revolution on its own started in 1789 and it lasted for about 10 years. Comte was settled completely by the destructive effect of the French Revolution which he believed undermined what the moral fabrics of the community. Because before this period, before the French Revolution, there was a breakdown of law and order in the society. There was incest. There was all forms of social problems. Pollution was high in his own French society when he was growing up. And he said, this was not how the society was structured before. This was not how the society was at the time he was growing up. So, he decided to look at what really could be the solution in order to solve most of this problem. So the French Revolution, like I was explaining, is the first modern and ideological revolution that has impact on the society because it changed the entire structure of the society. It changed the structure. It managed to eliminate the social distinction because at that point in time in France, there were classes. The class that exists then of the, in the feudal society was the class of the serfs and the class of the lords. The lords oversees everything. And as a result of that, there was injustice, there was corruption, there was chaos in the society. And the people at that point in time decided to revolt against that existing social structure. They decided to revolt against that social distinction in the society. And this is what led to what we refer to as the French Revolution. Because of this revolution, power shifted from the feudal laws and the church. Because at that point in time, the church, has a, the church was a veritable force in trying to control the people of the society at that point in time. 
So power shifted from those feudal lords who make use of the church as well as by way in so many ways, sometimes even granting them lands in order for them to make use of the, the, the church leaders in order to control the people by way of dishing out information to them. All this structure, the French Revolution, changes it by what? Trying to make the people now have the power and not longer with the lords. The French Revolution made the people feel like citizens because the lords has given themselves everything. So this revolution made the people, ah, we've taken back what rightly belongs to us. As the clerical hierarchy which had existed before the revolution gave up its right and property. Most of the lands, most of the properties, they were owned by various people of the society. The feudal lords then, the people took it back and redeemed their image. The revolution brought about changes into the family institution because at that point in time, the family institution itself was in chaos. There was no respect. There was no respect for the constituted authorities. People believe and do things the way they want to do. So this revolution brought about changes into the family institution. And this revolution also brought about the declaration of the fundamental human rights, which implies that before that period, the fundamental human rights of the people was barely non-existent. You have no right to speak. It is only what the Lord says be and it be. But the revolution changes this state of mind of the people. Because what? Those fundamental human rights that states that all humans are born free and equal came into existence as a result of what? The French Revolution. It implies that before that period, they, all humans were not equal. Because some people are at the hands of affairs and dictates what happens to other people of the society. So in addition, civil marriage and divorce were also established as a result of what? The French Revolution. That means before that period, once you are married, for better for worse, even if you have been abused, whatever is happening at that point in time, you just have to condone and stay with it. So it is this French Revolution that begin to bring people, oh, there should be civility when we are married. And there should also be ability for you to walk out of the marriage if it isn't working well. So this is what the French Revolution tries to, to explain that led to the emergence of this course that we are studying today, sociology. Secondly, there is also the role of the Industrial Revolution which is also one of the social forces that led to the emergence of this discipline today. What the, friend, the Industrial Revolution does is that by the mid-19th century, Europe was changing from agriculture to factory production. Because at that point in time, if I take you back briefly to that feudal society, the lands that the Lord gives out is for what? Production, agricultural production. People produce in those lands, the serves, the, the works on those lands, and for the lords to work on. So the Industrial Revolution changes from what? The agricultural factory, the agricultural production to factory production, which led to the emergence of what? New occupations and avenues for what? Employment. As the factory is producing, people need to work in those factories. It gives room for what? Employment opportunities to emerge. And as a consequence of this, the concentration of the people on land reduced, that is on agriculture reduced, as migration to the cities in search of new jobs became very rampant. You, everybody is living in agriculture because the city holds a brighter future for them. So people begin to move from agriculture into the city in search of what? Greener pasture. People were peeled from the rural area due to the job openings that exist in the industries in urban area. So people begin to move from those agriculture into the factory uh, production. In the urban area, however, as people move from the rural area into these cities, anonymity became the order of the day. Because you are just new, you are into the city, you don't know anybody. So people become very anonymous. There was also overcrowding because so many people move from rural area into the urban center. As a consequence, Poverty sets in into the urban center. There was pollution and other antisocial vices became the urban area's major characteristics. People begin to steal. 
corruption emerges because there were so much concentration of people in the urban center as a result of what? The Industrial Revolution. So as such, the search for greener pasture comes with its own challenges. These challenges include what? Horrible working condition because there is so many people trying to do a work that only one person should do. The condition of service became very poor, became very horrible for people to work with. There was also low pay because if you can take 10 naira for a job, then somebody will be willing to take 5 naira for that same job because there are so many people trying to do that very job. Also, as a consequence, there was long working hours. Instead of working a job that you could pay five people to do within five hours, you will give it to one or two people to do it for ten hours. And as well as what? Smoke. Because industry is about machines. And as machines work, people are exposed to smoke, noise, and lack of personal protective equipment for them to protect themselves at the point of their duty. And as a consequence, survival of the fittest became the order of the day. It is only the fittest that will survive in such working condition. So the Industrial Revolution brought about many social problems. It brought about many social problems, such as the labor capital dispute, because as people are working, and those who are at the hems of affairs, there is bound to be dispute, because it's about what? Social interaction. Also, housing became a problem. There is little house for so many people to get in the society. Over concentration of people in the urban center or urban area lead to so many social vices that emerges in the society at that point in time. So as a consequence, the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, unleashes so many problems that led to the emergence of this discipline that we study today known as society. So in order to find solution and bring back order back to the society, the, there is need for a discipline to emerge to study these social problems that, they, that had existed in the society. Lastly, it is the role of the Enlightenment. The French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, opened so many ways and avenues for people to begin to reason, to question the constituted authority. Enlightenment became the order of the day. So the field of sociology has its root in the age of the Enlightenment, which is in the 17th and 19th century. What does this mean? It means the Enlightenment era philosophers challenged the power and legitimacy of the institution of their day. It is not just about holding on to whatever those leaders say. No, people begin to question the authorities. Why do you do this the way you do it? Why don't you do it in this way? So as a result of that, Enlightenment thinkers believe that knowledge gained through scientific means will be more accurate than knowledge gained through non-scientific means or non-scientific observation or assumption. In the, because some leaders just assume if we do things this way, it is going to work out well. No, the Enlightenment era philosophers begin to question. You can't just assume things. It has to go through what? Scientific procedure. And that is why in most of those definitions that we've given about sociology, science, the concept of science, continue to what? Emerge from those definitions. Because sociology is about what? Scientific study of events, of things, so that you could give proper definition or conclusion and find solution to whatever those problem is all about. So ultimately, enlightenment thought was based on three major principles. The enlightenment thought was based on three major principles. One of those principles is that the universe is governed by natural rather than supernatural laws. Because in those eras, so there are things that even like, especially during the theological stages in the development of the society, that people just think, oh, whatever happened, we ascribe it to, we give it religious interpretation. We give it religious connotation. Somebody sneezes, you said something else. You know, we attach everything that happens to us. You hit your left leg on a stone, you attach religious connotation to it. Oh, it's a sign of bad luck, as the case may be. Or it's a sign, you hit your right leg, it's a sign of good luck. No. What Enlightenment era does is 
to give scientific explanations to events that happens in the society, rather than just mere assumption that most of the leaders of those uh, eras were given or using to lead the people at that very point in time. So ultimately, those three major principles is that the universe is governed by what? Natural. It's a natural law, rather than supernatural laws. Also, that the scientific method can answer fundamental questions in all areas of inquiry. There is no question that once you apply scientific methodology, there will be no answer to. Rather than just assuming things to, to, to give an explanation to events based on our own free will. No, it should be what? True scientific procedures that we are able to explain most of the things that happens in the society at that point. And lastly, that human race can be taught to achieve infinite improvement in their lives. You can improve from today till tomorrow. You can improve from doing what you used to do wrongly. You can improve on it if only scientific methodologies are applied in trying to solve most of these problems that exist in the society. So the Enlightenment era gives us that opportunity to express our feelings, to challenge constituted authority, to improve on our living conditions. Because if scientific methodologies are not applied in trying to explain events or happenings of the society at that point in time, society will remain stagnated. So as a consequence, these are some of the factors that led to the emergence of sociology as a discipline. People revolted in France there was also the industrial revolution when machines begin when machine begin to do all the production people move from agriculture into the factory setting and because they move it created a lot of problem for the society and for society to address those problems unemployment poverty poor health status lack of personal protective equipment all these for it to be addressed there is a need for a discipline to emerge to solve most of this problem. And that is how sociology emerges as a discipline to solve most of the problems that exist in the society at that very particular point in time. For more comments, inquiries, and uh, questions regarding this study session, you can refer back to my details and get more information.